Hi, I'm Robbie Bola, joined by offensive lineman Riker Matthews. You're not all sweaty because unfortunately you can't be out there. I know you'd like to be, so uh, give us an update on, on your injury and what your timeline for recovery is. Um, so my injury, just had surgery on both my hips, and I should be off my crutches next week. And then timeline-wise, I should be good 100% to go middle of June, hopefully. So by fall camp, for sure, we'll see you back out here with a number of other first-teamers that have been out uh, with some surgeries. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll be here. Uh, even though you haven't been out there, what are your initial thoughts with uh, Coach 2J, your new offensive line coach? Um, I think he's a great coach. He definitely knows what he's talking about, and uh, he, he knows how to um, affect us mentally. You know, it tries to... He's good at getting us going, and if we're having one of the players, if they're having a bad day, you know, he's good to go talk to him, calm him down, and tell him to get it going again. And um, he's a great coach. Um, I'm excited to start working with him. I haven't been able to do much besides just in the film room, but uh, um, I'm excited for our O line this season and what he's going to do to us. And so it's great. So what have you been able to do? You mentioned the fill room. Are you able to do any arms or core or, or, or any type of uh, workout at all? Um, I do upper body, lightweight upper body, and I, I can do bike and just for some cardio. And then once I'm off my crutches, then I'll be able to start doing heavy upper body and do some core workouts and abs and all that fun stuff. And then hopefully about two weeks after that, I'll start to jog and... And then from there, it's pretty fast, so. So until that starts, you're going to be pretty top-heavy, right? You've been working out the <laughs> upper body? Well, I mean, my upper body isn't that strong in the first place, so hopefully it just evens it out, if anything. This might be good for you, then. Yeah, it'll be good. Uh, Coach and I coming back as the offensive coordinator, he also has a lot to do with the offensive line. Uh, having Coach 2J and now Coach and I back, what, is, what does that combination do for the offensive line? Um, I mean, it's changing our whole mentality. Um, I mean, the offense is completely different from last year. We're always going. We're lining up on the ball eight seconds after it's down and getting a playoff in 12, 13 seconds. And so, I mean, the whole mentality of us needing to be 330 pounds is completely changing. And we're going to try to be around 300, 310. And, you know, so we can always be moving and be a lot quicker as well as strong. But be able to move and not just kind of be brick walls, you know? So, I mean, it's exciting what they're bringing to the game, so um, I'm ready for it now. When you were first coming to BYU, this was a coach and I offense. What have you noticed that's maybe changed about him for the two years he's been gone? Um, well, I wasn't, like right when I came in was right when he left. Mm -hmm. And so I never really worked with him much before um, he left, but I mean, from what I've heard and from what other players have talked to me about, he kind of is getting better at play calling and um, in different situations. He knows what he needs to run and the strengths of the O-line, the strengths of the quarterback and exactly what will work against defenses. And from what I understand, it's just all stuff that he has learned over time. You know, this th the three years that he was gone, two years that he was gone, he learned a lot, and I think it's going to be good for us. Had you met with him during the, your recruiting process? Uh, I met with him a couple of times. Um, not My main recruiting coordinator was uh, Doman and then Coach Weber because he was my O-line coach. But I met with him a couple times, and, you know, he's a great guy. He knows what he's talking about, knows how to run an offense. So it's exciting. You've had one of the more frustrating careers as far as just injuries. It just seems like the injury bug always bites you. So what do you do once you get healthy now from your hip surgeries to be able to stay that way and have a productive career? Um, there's just a lot of injury prevention lifts, you know, little arm things that you can do, shoulder things so I don't tear a shoulder. Or, um, I mean, I'll keep strengthening my hips so it doesn't happen, happen again. And I mean, really... It's just little injury prevention stuff like that to do with the training staff and the strength uh, strength coaches that that's, that'll give me my best chances of staying healthy. I mean, I'm hoping that my surgeries are done with for the rest of my career, but you never know, and all I can do is just kind of 
do my best in the weight room to stay healthy and do my best out here on the field to stay conditioned and so it doesn't happen again. The five positions on the offensive line are pretty thankless positions. Nobody seems to notice unless something goes wrong. You know, the quarterback gets sacked, they remember that there's offensive linemen there. Things go well, they just kind of forget that you're even there. So as you head in now to this next season, what do you guys do as a group to again become a dominant force for BYU football? Well, I mean, it's all a mentality. It's all in your head. Um, the, peop the players that let things get to them and, you know, they need that recognition. They're the ones that kind of don't really improve. And as an O-line, as a unit, we just need to be able to, you know, we go in the film room and we give each other props for good blocks or um, stuff like that. But it's all in your own head and you can't, you can't be prideful and expect things like that. And as an O-line, I mean, none of us are... Um, you know, cocky or expect anything like that. But, I mean, the quarterbacks give us um, good recognition, running backs. I mean, anyone that has anything to be a part of us, they make sure that we get our recognition we need, even though it's not in the media or anything. Um, I mean, it's we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty well off in that category, and we don't really need the media hype anyways. So. Okay, we won't give it to you then. We won't worry about that. No, <laughs> just kidding. We'll, if you do well, well, we'll definitely give you the hype. Uh, I'll end with a random question here. What's been the most difficult thing with the crutches? I mean, if you've had to go around campus, what are, what's something that you didn't realize, man, I didn't know this was going to be so tough? Um, uh, I don't know. I had my foot surgery, you know, last fall, and so I kind of had to go through the crutch thing with that too. But This is the norm for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just norm. It's just like walking is. But probably just stairs, you know, just getting up and down stairs. You have to go one step at a time, and especially when we're coming down from meetings or something, I'm going down the stairs. There's a whole line waiting behind me to get down the stairs and just taking my time. But There's a life lesson in there somewhere, taking it one <laughs> stair at a time. Exactly. Do, are, do people hold the door open for you or anything like that? Though? Oh, yeah. It's nice. Okay. I mean, there, there are some props to being on crutches, but um, not, not too many. <laughs> Because you're not a, a five foot, hundred pound girl that you know they'll go and open the door for. So I just wondered how naturally it would be for, for yeah. people to think to do that for you. Yeah, I mean, if, I mean they open the door for me anyways because I'm huge. But <laughs> <laughs> you know they're scared I'll beat them up. But um, yeah, crutches definitely aren't fun at all. <laughs> okay, well we look forward to you getting rid of these and then certainly be back out in the fall. Me too. Thank you.